your heavens and the earth will hear oh speak from your heavens and the earth will hear father speak from your heavens and the earth will hear when you speak from your heavens the earth will hear my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you my altar is calling my
Take my prayer. Oh God, take my prayer. Take my prayer. Take my prayer. Shalom, everyone. This is Eliyahu Malak uh, with the Great Awakening Assembly of the Most High, also known as TGA Assembly. If you're looking on Facebook and YouTube, you can please like, subscribe, uh, share, uh, follow the pages. Um, just got a good one for us today. Um, as I'm sitting here thinking, um, we're in a season of a uh, where the Most High kind of showed me, even in December of 23, November, December, of how this is a season of judgment and exposure. Um, I was just reminded of a uh, dream that I had. And uh, and as we're going into this 2024 season, we can kind of see that on all fronts. Um, but also when the Most High is judging certain things, he only judges the unjust. But the Bible says that he rewards the righteous. So we got to look at the flip side of things. You know, as something's being judged, uh, there's also a redeeming quality and a grace and a favor that's being outpoured as well. Because even how the Bible talks about how Yahushua led captive in captivity and gave gifts unto men. So there's a time that uh, I feel that Yahuwah is troubling the waters. He's, he's shaking the heavens and the earth. Uh, so that the things that cannot be shaken shall remain and so that we know what our footing is upon and that we'll know what is real and what is not. So that that's in of itself is, is Yahuwah's grace. It may feel uh, terrible uh, to us when it's happening, but when we know the truth and can walk in the truth as Yahuwah is exposing all the falsities, uh, we can see uh, Yahuwah's uh, love in that. So. Um, I'm going to get into a, a video or a teaching concerning, let's see, concerning the principles of fasting and how to, how to gain power through prayer and fasting. Okay. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. Because it is very important. Give me one second. Let me make sure everything's going all right. Yeah. So it's very important. Um, that we understand uh, some of the principles of prayer, some of the principles of fasting. And uh, because it's, uh, as I've always heard this, uh, either we're fixing to go through a trial, we're in a trial, or we're coming out of a trial. So there's always a time that we should be prepared, should be ready uh, for what's uh, what is going on, what's about to happen, or what we came from uh, in our lives. So uh, there are some important things that I want to talk about concerning prayer and fasting. Uh, so let's just hop into it. And like I say, uh, I'm Eliyahu Malak, and this is Great Awakening. Hallelujah.
All right, so let's just hop right into it. Hopefully you can hear me well, because I don't have my mic. So these are the principles of prayer and fasting. We're going to get to this real quickly. So uh, let's let's go. All right, so what is fasting? Okay, here's some definitions that I found uh, concerning fasting. Fasting is the dedication to a period of time to devote oneself to uh, to sp spiritual priority of prayer without food. Okay, uh, it is also a personal commitment to renounce the natural to invoke the spiritual. Ah, that's beautiful. And it's also the willful abstaining from natural pleasures for a spiritual purpose. It is a personal commitment to renounce the natural, to invoke the spiritual. So it is a personal thing that you're committing yourself to renounce the natural so that you can invoke something that is spiritual. So sometimes uh, we can go on a fast. Sometimes Yahuwah can call us on a fast. All right. Uh, because there's something that he wants to do in us. Um, I'm going to get into a lot of different facets of, of the benefits of fasting. Um, so let's keep going. Let me roll into it. Uh, I had these slides a long time ago. Uh, I kind of skimmed through them. So I really don't know what's in them. So, But we're going to add some meat as we go along. Okay. So fasting. Let's look at it. This is Joel 2, 12 through 13. It says, Therefore also now saith Yahuwah, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. So what fasting does, it, it positions or it changes the posture of your heart so that you can come into alignment with what Yahuwah wants for your life, uh, what he's trying to do uh, in the spirit realm and trying to align your life, your spiritual walk with that, okay? So he's saying to turn with him with all of your heart. Because as you abstain from or to afflict, if you're afflicting your soul, um, that means you're abstaining from natural things. You're, you're, you're bringing your flesh into subjection so that you can open up a, a deeper connection in the realm of the spirit. OK, uh, these are just principles uh, that of, of fasting. So we do this with weeping and with mourning. And he says this and rend your heart and not your garments. Because we know that in the Hebrew culture, ancient Hebrew culture, a lot of times they would rent their garments as a signification of mourning and a signification of their fasting. But you who are saying, just don't don't tear your garments up. I need your heart to be torn. I need your heart to be open so that you can be ready to receive what I'm trying to do so that you can be able to pick up uh, in the realm of the Ruach what I'm doing in the realm of the Ruach. In the realm of, of the rule, he's saying he needs you to pick up in your ruach what he's doing in the realm of the ruach. OK, so let's keep going. And it says, turn unto Yahuwah, your Elua, for he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and repented him of his evil. So fasting is a time of introspection. It's not a time that we are trying to uh, focus about others, focus on others and trying to uh, do something that's outside of our control, outside of our means. It's really the first most important thing is to focus on ourselves, get ourselves in the right alignment. So then that you who can also speak to us concerning a situation, a matter uh, uh, that we're facing or about to face, don't even know that we're in. Things of that nature. So we're going to keep going. All right. Hmm. I see my camera is acting funny. All right. There it is. All right. So who is fasting for? Uh, Joel says this. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. So it's for the elders. Gather the children, so it's for the children, and those that suck the breast, so it's even for the uh, the toddlers or newborns, okay? It says, let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber. Now, this is important because in Hebrew culture, uh, a bridegroom was able to have uh, certain benefits or certain uh, relief of certain duties uh, when he was uh, first married, Um 
I believe in the uh, what is called well, let's call it the tour. Um, a bridegroom didn't have to go to war for a whole year so that he can stay in connection uh, with his wife so he can get to know her. Um, there's something else that he had to do. I don't I, was it pay tax something, but he had a full year that he can stay and join and uh, make us a deep and a strong connection uh, with his wife. So he was relieved of certain duties uh, such as uh, going to fight and things of that nature. All right. But Yahuwah is saying concerning this fast, I need it doesn't matter. Forget the pleasures of marriage and, and, and all of that. I need you to face me. I need you before me uh, for this. OK, so let's look at it again. It says. Uh, so let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and let the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and the ministers of Yahuwah weep between the porches and altar. It says, and let them say, spare thy people, O Yah. And give not thine heritage to report to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their lure? So Yahuwah is saying that this fasting is pretty much for everyone, even for the beast of the field, uh, on certain occasions. So fasting is a is something that we all it sometimes have to partake in, uh, to break certain things off of our lives and also uh, to enter into certain dimensions in Yahuwah, okay? Uh, this is the benefits of fasting, okay? So let's keep looking. So why do we fast? All right? This is one reason. We fast to receive revelation, all right? So look, let's look at Daniel 9, 2 and 3. And it says, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years wherefore uh, the word of Yahuwah came to Jeremiah, a Yeremiahu, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of uh, Jerusalem. And I set my face unto Yahuwah Lua to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. So this is another thing that we have to understand. I, I chose this verse because just look at it. Now, here it is that Daniel understood by the books of the of the prophet uh Yeremiah that there were 70 years that had to be accomplished uh to be that the, uh, the children of Judah primarily uh the kingdom of Judah would be in Babylon now this is what we would do in our day and age we would look at that and say okay 70 years are almost up and we would try to run take up arms and do something within our own strength so that's why it's important to understand. You just don't need to understand what Yahuwah is going to do. But you have to seek Yahuwah to discern how he's going to bring about his will. Okay? And that's what is lacking in Israel. That people are going off of presumptions, going off knowing, some of them don't know what Yahuwah is doing. But you can perceive or, or, or look at something and know what Yahuwah wants. But you have to come into alignment with you, you with Yahuwah to see, okay, Yahuwah, I know this is what you want. But Yahuwah, how do you want this to be done? How do you want this to be handled? Because I don't want to get in my flesh and mismanage this. Because we have to have like uh, the spirit of Issachar. All right. The Bible talks about how there was 200 uh, people of Issachar who understood the times and the seasons to know what Israel ought to do. They were men of understanding, men of wisdom of the time and the season to know what to do, okay, and how to do it, okay? So this is what we need. This is what prayer and fasting is for. It's to give revelation concerning an issue. You can know what the issue is about. You can see the issue, okay? But you have to understand, okay, Yahuwah, how do you want to deal with this issue because the word says that uh if the laborers are laboring without yahuwah's consent they're just laboring in vain if the buildings if yahuwah is not building the house if yahuwah is not uh uh telling you to go all that you're doing is in vain and even in certain situations if you're trying to come against certain situations 
it can be the right situation that you're coming against. But if you don't have your who, if your who have not sent you to come against a certain situation, you're you're risking the the um you're risking being um pretty much uh chewed up and spit out. Because here it is, you're going against the enemy without your who being on your side. So you're not on your who side and you're not on the enemy side. So you're 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 really on no man's land. You're really uh on no one's side. So it's very important that we understand what we're doing and how important, how sensitive some situations and some matters are. OK, you have to be uh, ordained by you. And we're going to get into a little bit of that as we go on. All right. So we have to receive revelation. OK, this is what fasting does. And let's see that. So it says, and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supp supplication before you, who my Lord, for the holy mountain of our Lord. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I've seen in a vision at the beginning and being uh, caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. OK, let me stop right there. Uh, so do you see? how Daniel was praying. He was not praying, trying to come against something, come against people. He wasn't praying, saying, Yahuwah, I want you to strike down Babylon and then set us free. He wasn't praying quite like that. He understood the reason why they were in the position that they were in. Because if Yahuwah says that I'm going to make you above every nation, um, I'm going I'm to I'm give you powers over serpents and scorpions, over all the powers of the enemy, and no, nothing shall harm you. I'm going to make you above and not beneath. I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. That uh, one should chase a thousand, two should put ten thousand in flight. That um, I'm going to make you a, a, a lender, not a borrower. So if you understand all these things, you really know that if the if these, if you, you know what I'm saying, if you hearken to the voice of Yahuwah, Allah, to do all the commandments that he commanded us this day, that these blessings shall come upon us and overtake us. That's a system that's going to automatically uh, happen through obedience. So Daniel understood that we're in this reason, we're in this situation because we fell off somewhere. We've sinned against you. So he's confessing his sin. He's purging himself. He's going into introspection and he's interceding for his nation, for his people, those that don't even understand what's going on, he's interceding for them. Okay, so that's the most. That's one uh, particular aspect of fasting. It's about getting yourself in alignment, purging, uh, uh, gaining power uh, in your ruach. Okay, so let's keep going. So then he says. Uh, let me read this again. So let me read the 21st verse. It says, Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, who I've seen in a vision in the beginning, being uh, caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. So even when you pray, being consistent in prayer, being consistent with the time, because in the Ruach, time is a place. OK, so if I meet with Yahuwah, in the evening oblation, I believe there was a there was a morning oblation around six. There was a noon oblation around twelve, and then there was an evening oblation around three o'clock. So, <clears throat> even certain times, if you're meeting Yahuwah being consistent in a certain period of time, you're creating a, an altar of prayer. All right, please, if you haven't look at look at my uh, video concerning uh, building an altar of prayer. I forgot what I've called it, um, but. It shows how through consistency uh, that we that's how we build an altar of prayer. So even meeting at a certain time um, consistently, time is a place. So that's very important. All right. So it says, and he informed me and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel, I am come forth to give thee skill and understanding at the beginning of thy supplication. Uh, the commandment came forth, and I come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. So we also understand that I believe Gabriel continued to talk about how uh, he was. He said from the first hour that you begin to pray, Daniel, since I heard you, he said, but I was for 21 days 
I had to battle the prince of Persia. All right. And he began to tell Daniel, he says, and after the prince of Persia, uh, the prince of the prince of, of, of Greece is coming. So what we need to understand that the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. And also that we we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So he wasn't Gabriel wasn't talking about the actual prince of Persia. He was talking about the, a, a principality that was over the territory and over the culture, the Persian culture. OK, and the principality is a ruling class spirit that has influence over a certain area of territory. And he's the one that makes up the rules and the laws and he governs the people. And then there's powers to come to make those things real. OK, so we need to understand that Daniel prayer was helping uh, Mikael and Gabriel uh, to fight uh, the principalities of Persia. OK, that's how important uh, our 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 uh, words are and even praying the words of Yahuwah. We have to understand that the, uh, the Ruachal realm and the heavenly realm is like a courtroom. So we have to, I'm getting so many different things going on in my head. So we have to understand that we're, we're not just to pray our words, but we're to pray the words of Yahuwah, the living word, the word that's proceeding out of the mouth of heaven at that time. So that's why it's so important to pray in the Ruach. Because we don't know what to pray like we ought. But the spirit, the Ruach, the Ruach HaKodesh make it intercession for us. And it knows the mind of Yahuwah. It knows the mind. It knows what he wants, his will. So that's why it's important to understand how to pray. And to really be consistent in prayer. So then that you can then come into, uh, uh, come into, uh, what's the word I want to look into? Come into a right relationship. And tap in with what the Ruach HaKodesh is saying in that time. And that takes that takes time. This takes a, a, a time. You know, even I, I say this often. I It takes me 45 minutes, depending if, if I'm just by myself sitting and to just, just praying, just praying. It takes me for at least 45, minimum 45 to an hour to get in a realm where it feels like I'm flowing in the Ruach. Now, now it's different when I'm praying for someone, you know what I'm saying? Because we're talking, we're communicating, I'm getting things as you're speaking, um, I'm responding and, and things of that nature. So as I'm as we're speaking, you know, what I'm saying you get certain what people call downloads or insight and things of that nature. So when I'm speaking, it's a little bit quick. But when I'm just in my in myself meditating uh, certain things, uh, it takes a while to get in that realm of the Ruach. And you're flowing from your inner man. Okay. All right. So let's keep going. We need to receive revelation. And we do that by denying ourselves. And uh, fasting. All right. So let's look. Also fasting increases our spiritual capacity. All right. Let's look at this. This is Matthew 4, 1 through 3. It says, then was Yahushua led up to the uh, spirit. Led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of Hasatan. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungered. And when uh, the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Allah, command these stones to be made bread. So we need to understand this. Now, first of all, uh, here it is that the Ruach is leading Yahushua to be tempted. So sometimes you will lead us down a path that doesn't seem so good. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, uh, thou art with me because thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. OK, so sometimes you can lead us down a path because Som sometimes we wonder why. Why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to go through that situation? Why did I have to experience that? Because the one thing that I've learned is that the anointing comes through experience. The anointing comes through uh, being exposed to certain things. And that's the only way you who can get you in, uh, get you to understand certain realms of that. He, a lot of times we just think, why he can't say it? Because your, your Ruach can't comprehend 
what Yahuwah is trying to say. Because what we need to understand that the thoughts that we get when we say Yahuwah is speaking to me, it's really we're, we're discerning Yahuwah's voice in the Ruach. Okay? Because Yahuwah's voice is not, is not spoken. I don't know why. Focus. Come on. Focus. Focus. Y'all give me one second. Okay, there it is. So we need to understand that uh, Yahuwah's voice is not heard. It's discerned. Okay? And I had to learn that. I had to learn that. Because what happens is sometimes we get in a, uh, a filthy environment. <laughs> an unyali environment. And that there's other voices are speaking. Now, unbeknownst to us, we're not familiar with that. We're not familiar with uh, uh, having a, there's a strong voice that is speaking. So we hear something and thinking it's Yahuwah and it be Hasatan. So that's why he says, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Why is he saying that? There's another voice. But we're not accustomed to that. Um, but we have to get accustomed. We have to understand that, that there's other voices that can be speaking so we have to have the discernment have spiritual maturity and the word to discern Yahuwah's voice because a lot of people are being seduced being deceived because man that sounds like Yahuwah okay um the person that's speaking is using scripture so and then I got a dream I got a premonition I got a vision or blah 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 you see what I'm saying but we know that Hasatan can transform itself into an angel light and show signs and wonders. And the Bible says that even the very elect would be deceived if it were possible. So that's why it's important. And this is what fasting does. OK, let me look back at this because I'm doing a lot of talking. So um, fasting increases your spiritual capacity because you need to understand this. When you're fasting. In the realm of the spirit. You are increasing your spiritual capacity. And when you're doing that, you're attracting spirits, good and bad. All right. So that's what happened. So here it is. Yahusha is fasting. So they're seeing they're seeing something going on in the realm of the spirit. They can see. See, we, we we're not used to we're not used to seeing what how the realm people, you know, those that are in the spiritual realm can see certain things going on. So they can see when people are fasting. They can see when something, a change is about to happen. They can see what's going on. They may not know exactly what's going on, but they can see it. Just like in the days of Moshe. Here it is that now all of a sudden Pharaoh wants to kill all the children that's two years and under. Why is that? Because the principality that was over Egypt at that time can see what was going on in the realm of the spirit. And he tried to cut it off before it could even uh, come to fruition. You see what I'm saying? This isn't this isn't just natural people making decisions. These are people being influenced by principalities. Same thing in Yahushua's time. Kill all the children is two years and under. Why? Because they can see in the realm of the spirit something's going on. We got to cut this off. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm associated with people who've been into prison and they say, you know, you got different gangs and different organizations, whatever you want to call it in prison. OK, so they may see one gang, which is predominantly in the South, is, is a particular uh, uh, organization. And um, when they see them coming together, the other gangs are like, oh, my goodness. So they'll come together. They can see something is going on. There's there's a meeting that's happening. Uh, there's some uh, some um, planning that's going on. So they get together to counteract that. Same thing happens in the in the realm of the Ruach. Yahuwah can be doing something, and Hasatan can see there's something's going on here. We got we got to stop this. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? And I get a little bit later when we're talking about stars and destiny. And things of that nature. I think I spoke a little bit on it concerning um, the uh, ministry of Yahushua. So let's let's keep going. So we need to understand that it's kind of like it's kind of like this in the realm of the ruach. We're kind of like 
pipes. All right. And just just think about this. Just think about if you have a four inch pipe connected to an ocean of water. OK, your who is like that ocean of water. OK, but if you only a four inch pipe, there's only so much water that can, can flow through you and flow through that pipe. So what fasting does, coupled with prayer, it increases your spiritual capacity so that you can expand. And so instead of being a four inch pipe, you can be a 12 inch pipe, a 20 inch pipe. So more of the Ruach can flow through you and more of the things of Yahuwah uh, that he wants to do on the earth can manifest. So that's what prayer and fasting does. All right. OK, so let's keep going. So here it is, like I said, when you are fasting, um, you draw spirits to you, good and bad. And I'm going to say this because many of you, I, I've dealt with some people and they'll say, well, I've never dealt with this. I never dealt with that. I've never really had dreams. You know what I'm saying? And in my mind, I'm kind of like, you just wait. Start, start praying and fasting. Because prayer and fasting is a weapon of warfare. Okay? And it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to be uh, doing spiritual warfare prayer points. It's just you increasing in spiritual, uh, in, in the spirit. And you will start to have dreams, okay? Like if you're, if you're fasting, I got a little bit of notes here. But if you're fasting, you'll probably start having dreams of eating. Because in the realm of the Ruach, or you have a dream of something or someone, maybe a faceless person. Or you may be at a buffet or whatever. You can see hands trying to give you food or whatever. Um, you may have dreams concerning uh, someone trying to feed you. That's because in the realm of the Ruach, these agents of darkness are trying to feed you to cancel out your fasting. Because certain dreams are not just dreams that we're having in our mind. That's, that's uh, the spirit realm that we're tapping into. That's the realm of the spirit. So they can cancel your fast in the realm of the spirit. It's already counseled and void in the realm, in the natural realm. So that's what they do. If you're dealing with uh, perversions or you're dealing with um, breaking covenants and things of that nature, you'll probably start having more uh, seductive and sexual dreams. OK, why is that? Because sex is is we know that sex is used as a, as a form of bonding and making covenants. So you will probably start having sexual dreams. That doesn't mean that uh, something is. Uh, particularly going on within you that's just the way that these dark agents of of these agents of darkness are trying to cancel the covenant are trying to initiate and establish or strengthen the covenant that's already there okay so that's why you have to come against these things let's see what else i have okay so if you're seeing um if you're seeing uh eating i say eating while fasting they're trying to neutralize your fast and accuse you. See what I'm saying? Oh, look, he's, he's eating. He's eating. Because what you're doing in the realm of the spirit is the same as what you're doing in the natural. Okay? If you're um, having sex, that's, it. that's an exchange of virtues. Okay? You're initiating covenant. Okay? And also, these spirits can be trying to initiate sicknesses, infertility, diseases, poverty. You see what I'm saying? Uh they're trying to implement evil deposits in you, okay? Or they're trying to war against uh, your marriage. So you might have marital frust frustrations, okay? Uh, let's see. That's all I have for that. Um, I'm not going to go into all this. That's other stuff that I've dealt with. Uh, you might uh, start dreaming about your grandmother or whatever, dead people. Those are ancestral powers, ancestral strong men, could be, or just uh, familiar spirits trying to imitate people that you know and um, love to try to heighten or trying to uh, lower your uh, awareness so they can implement certain agendas in your life. Okay. So let's, let's keep going. So that's what happened with Yahushua. Here he is fasting, just been ordained. And here it is. Hasatan shows up. Why? To try to cancel what just happened. All right. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. So let me go through this. Let me go through this. So th these are three ways that uh, Hasatan will try to uh, attack us. 
So verse three says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of Elua, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word to proceed out of the mouth of Elua. Again, this goes back to Daniel. I cannot take upon myself to do something and Yahuwah has not told me to do it. So here it is. Yahushua was so in line with his father. He says, no. He says, I'm not fixing to do that. I don't have to prove myself that I'm the son of, of Elua. I don't have to prove anything. I'm going to, if Yahuwah tells me to do it, then I do it. But he says, so I don't live by bread alone. But I live by every word that proceeds from the throne room of my father. So if I don't hear you who would tell me to do this, I'm not going to do it. I don't care what it is. So that's what, what we need to understand. Many of you have been through trials and tribulations because we, we did things presumptuously. We ask you who, if you, if this be you, then let somebody with a green shirt pass by me. Then somebody with a green shirt pass. See, those, those I, I know Gideon did that, and so, but those are not good uh, ways of acclimating when you're who is trying to do something. That, that's not a good way. You have to have discernment. You have to count up the cost. You have to have discernment. You have to have patience. And you have to knowingly know that you who is sending you. Okay. Because a lot of times we do things out of the presumptions of our own hearts and the desires of our own hearts. And we jump to false conclusions because of the desire. Sometimes the desires of our hearts will cause us to have certain dreams and, to, and cause us to create certain signs. Okay? You see what I'm saying? And that's what Yahuwah says. He says even, even those false prophets, he says they're prophesying out of the wickedness of their own hearts. These dreams are coming out of the out of their own heart so that can happen to us too you see what i'm saying we because because we'll, we'll have a desire to do something and we want it to be so and we'll cause ourselves to have a dream and said this is a sign from you so that's why we have to be patient we have to fast fasting is emptying yourself and filling yourself with the ruach hakodesh it's being in a place of contentment and getting, uh, truly getting before Yahuwah concerning a situation. And don't move until Yahuwah tells you to move. Or move when Yahuwah tells you to move. All right? Hallelujah. Okay? So, the first thing Hasatan did was he tried to, uh, he tried to hit, uh, Yahushua in his flesh. Because he knew, okay, you're fast and you're hungry. Command these stones to be turned to bread. Yahushua said, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so let's look at the next thing he tried to do. All right. It says, then uh, Hasatan taken him up to a holy city and set him uh, on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of Elua, cast thyself down. Now he's using scriptures for it's written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands. They shall bear thee up. Lest at any time <clears throat> thou dash thy foot against the stone. All right. And Yahushua said unto him, but it's written again, thou should not tempt Yahuwah Alua. All right. <clears throat> so here it is. So the second thing uh, Hasatan tried to tempt Yahushua in was in his soul, in his mind, with scripture. He sneakily twisted scriptures. All right. Because that is in scriptures. That, that scripture that he named, I think it's Psalms 91 verse 11. Let me see if I can find it. Let me read it to you. That's Psalms. I thought I had it in here, but I don't. But I have my, my Bible with me. Psalms 91.11 says this. This is going to be kind of long, y'all. I do apologize, I guess. Not really. Psalms 95.11 says, And for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. All right. So it says, There shall no evil befall thee, uh, neither shall any plague come now thy dwelling, for he should give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. But see, Hazatan used it out of context. He wanted Yahusha to, to jump off a pinnacle and use that scripture. 
Again, he's trying to get Yahushua to prove himself. Don't ever try to, don't ever worry about your reputation. Don't ever get into um, trying to be great. That's where a lot of people are falling out. Listen to me. You're wondering, what happened? Why did this happen to these people? Where did it go wrong? And this is what I've, I've always heard. I heard that things don't go wrong. They start wrong. OK. It be certain desires to try to prove yourself. You can be you can be you can have a wound in your spirit. Because because you may have been in ministry with your father, you may have been in ministry with somebody and now you're wounded. So now you have to go and you set yourself out to try to prove yourself, to prove what you're doing is right. Many of us in this wall, we've been wounded by people who we love. It can be fathers. It can be mentors. It can be pastors. It can be family members. We've been we've been wounded. So then we set out on a quest. Hear me out now. This is the answer to your question. We can set out on a quest and saying, why? What happened? See, they, they, they set out to try to prove others wrong. See, that's pride. That's pride right there. That wound created pride. And then they create another entity to come in. And says, okay, now, see, if you're rid of this, then do this. Then do that. Now go to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, there it is. You done started wrong. You're going you're going to and fro. You're going here and there. You see what I'm saying? Off of a wound. And hurt people hurt people. And now you, you're following the seducing spirit. And now this spirit has seduced you to thinking you're more than what you are. Because that's what pride does. It inflates. So now you're thinking you're more than what you are. And now you got others worshiping you, putting you on a pedestal. And now you're indoctrinating them with the same spirit that's influenced you. That's why the Bible says you're deceiving while being deceived. And now you created this atmosphere of deception. And now there's a principality that's came in, rolled in on that because you're being consistent in that thing. And now here it is. You're spewing out all of this, this, this boo-boo garbage filth upon every soul of man that's in your vicinity. And uh, hallelujah, I say it, say it really is. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so let's see, let's see. Where did I start off? The, where did I leave off the? All right, it says, Yehush said unto him, For it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt you who are thy Lord. Okay, hey, again, the devil take him upon an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things I give thee if thou shalt fall down and worship me. And then said unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it's written, thou shalt worship uh, thy uh, worship Yahuwah, thy Lua, and him only shall I serve. So these are the three ways Hasatan came to him, came to his flesh. Tried to make him to eat because he was weird. Came to his soul, twisted scriptures, twisted them out of context. <clears throat> so that's why it's so important that we have to have the Ruach HaKodesh because the Ruach gives us context. The spirit gives us context to Yahuwah's word. Okay. Without the spirit, we can get the righteousness of Yahuwah to go and establish our own righteousness. And here it is, a whole people are following another doctrine, another Yahushua. Another savior, another deity. Okay, so that's why we have to have the discernment. We have to have a pure, true relationship. The pure in heart shall see you who. Okay, so and also then he hit him in the realm of the spirit, or his spirit man, which is considering worship. <clears throat> worship. Those that worship me must worship me in what? <clears throat> in spirit and in truth. Worship is a spiritual thing. It's you're aligning, you're attaching your spirit to another spirit when you're worshiping. So that's why you have to be, you have to be, um, you have to, <laughs> you have to be uh, careful because false worship, idolatry is synonymous with adultery because worship is spirits interchanging and intertwining with each other. Okay. So a lot of times when you see adultery, you see idolatry. Or when you see idolatry, you see adultery. Because Yahuwah says, 
thou should not have no other allures, uh, or no other gods, little g, before me. You see what I'm saying? So you have to watch it. What are you aligning yourself up to? What are you pledging your allegiance to? What are you giving your all to? Are you giving your all to a man? Or are you giving your all to who you know Yahusha to be according to, yes, the word, but the living Ruach of this word, okay? The living person. Yahuwah is alive. Yahusha is a living person. He's an actual entity. He's, a be he's, he's, he's seated in heavenly places. We have to align ourselves with him. This is going to be a long one. Uh, I didn't know I had all this to say. So um, we have to understand that. Watch what we're worshiping. Okay. So let's go. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. And it says, And Yahushua being full of the Ruach HaKodesh returned from Jordan. And was led by the spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of uh, the devil. See, so this one's saying that through the 40 days he was tempted. And in those days he, he did eat nothing. And when he were ended, he afterward hungered. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So we need to understand even, even when we go through something, it's seasonal. Hasatan never leaves. He may leave for a while, but he'll come back. It's a season. So certain certain things that you may be battling now, you're like, man, why am I battling this again? I, that, that happened four years ago. Whatever it is, whatever it is, any types of perversions, Hasatan will always come, or the agents of darkness, the, the, you know what I'm saying? They'll always come back to see if they can gain entry. They'll, they'll never forget. I used to live there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be back. Don't worry. You see what I'm saying? Don't worry. You know, so that's why there's certain seasons why we have to do, we have to pray and fast. You have to be sensitive in your Ruach to understand, okay, I'm, oh, uh, here it is. I'm having certain thoughts. It's coming. I'm having certain, that's, thoughts just don't come to your mind. There's spirits whispering in your ear. Y'all remember that I had, had the good angel and the bad angel, whatever. That's real. There's spirits trying to gain re-entry. And if it's, if it's consistent, let me pray. Let me fast and cast these things out. All right. So let's keep going. All right. So, and when the devil had ended his temptation, he departed from him for a season. And who should return in the power of the Ruach into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all of the region round about. Now, I had some notes. I can't find them. But just notice, it wasn't until after... He finished that trial or that temptation. Through that trial, he gained power in the Ruach. You see what I'm saying? So that's why you going through what you're going through. That's why you went through what you went through. Because after you came out, you got a certain anointing. You see what I'm saying? You gained certain power. So don't think you're a loser. Don't think you're, you're weak. You see what I'm saying? There's a gaining, there's an access that you have. So utilize this time after you come out. Yes, you may be weak. You may be tired or whatever. But here it is. Take this time in this season because this Bible says uh, afterwards. Um, I don't know if I have it in here, but no. But afterwards, it talks about how angels came and they ministered unto Yahushua. They gave him insight. They gave him food. They gave him understanding. They gave him all these things. So in this time, get what you get can get from Yahushua. Okay? This is a time after you came through that, that circumstance that, you, okay, this is a time that I, I need to build myself up, gain insight, gain this stuff through fasting and praying. Praying is seeking Yahuwah, seeking his face, turning from our weakness so that he can hear from heaven and heal us. All right? So let's keep going. So prayer also causes us to give more. Let's see if I said everything that I want to say out of that. Hallelujah. So yes. Um, yeah, there's a fame that's going to go out. There's a fame that's going to go out. Where people saw you. Oh man, what happened? What happened? Yahuwah is really just putting that spotlight on you. Now, 
uh, people are going to uh, marvel at what you who is doing and what he's done in your life. Okay, so that's why you don't worry, don't ever worry about your reputation. You, you, the Bible says that Yahushua made himself of no reputation because he knew what was in man. He didn't go by the accolades and the oohs and the ahs because he knew what was in man. He knew that the same people that can be saying Hosanna, Hosanna could be the same ones later on saying crucify him, crucify him. Okay? So what you need to worry about is your character. That's who you are. That's what's in you. To make sure that your character, that you have integrity. Your character is who you really are. Your reputation is what people think about you. Okay? I don't care. If my character is right, my reputation will be right. But my reputation can be good. And I can be hiding stuff within my heart. And my character can be flawed. Okay? But Yahuwah is going to send a trial to expose what's truly in you. Okay? Whether it's wood, hay, stubble, all those things can be will be burned. In the day of judgment, in the day of testing. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so another benefit of fasting, it causes you to give more. All right, and let's look at this. Acts 10, 1 through 4 says, And there was a man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. He was a devout man, one who feared the Lord with all of his house, which gave much alms to the people. See, this is another weapon of warfare, giving. When you give alms to those that are in need, you're creating an altar unto Yahuwah. And he prayed to Yahuwah. That's another altar. Always. He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour again. Ninth hour of the day. What, what was going on in the ninth hour? That was, uh, that, that was a time that they, he, he prayed. Okay? So in the ninth hour, like I said, Time is a place in the Ruach. I just got that to today. Time is a place in the Ruach. So uh, the angel of uh, Alua coming into him uh, and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Adonai? Uh, what is it, Master? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before Alua. All right, let me wait for my camera to get right. There we go. So he had to see that prayer, his prayer and his giving was like a memorial. He created an altar through him doing that consistently. That a Malachine had to come down and see what he, what, what are you doing? You've, you, you've called me because of what you're doing. All right. So here I am, here I am, to to not just save you, but to save your whole household. Now, just think about how 2,000 years ago, now just think about Cornelius' household and how many people that's been. That's how you truly redeem a bloodline, by obedience to the Ruach, okay, and no natural aspects. Uh, yeah, okay. So... Let's look at this. Uh, also, fasting establishes your ministry. Another benefit. Okay. Acts 13, 1 through 4 says, Now there were in the church uh, assembly that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, uh, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene. Um, I've heard somewhere that Lucius of Cyrene was actually Simon of Cyrene to help Yahushua uh, carry his cross. But anyway, um, and Manan which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. And they ministered to Yahuwah and fasted. And the Ruach HaKodesh said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And uh, when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, and they sent them away, so they being sent forth by the Ruach HaKodesh to part it unto Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. So again, these men were mature in the Ruach because they were mature men, prophets, apostles, things of that nature. So just notice how they were just praying before Yahuwah and fasting before Yahuwah. And it says, then the Ruach HaKodesh says, separate me unto me, Barnabas and Paul. See, these it didn't say that one man said, I heard this in the Ruach. 
uh, to separate uh, to separate these and people just can you know saying came in alignment with it. No, because these all these men were first praying together. That's fasting together. That's why it's important that when you're fasting, there's there's strength in numbers. So if all are fasting concerning a certain purpose, um, it 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 harnesses more power. All right. And so all these men were mature in the Ruach. All of them, I believe, heard in the Ruach. The Ruach saying, separate me Barnabas and Paul. Nobody had to say nothing to each other. They probably say, you heard that? Yeah, I heard that. You heard? Yeah, okay. So yeah, Barnabas, Shaul, y'all come here. You see what I'm saying? So it established ministry. And it told them where to go. Again, you don't move unless you who it tells you to move. I don't care what what it is. You have to wait. Don't be asking for a sign. You should say, I'm a wicked and adulterous generation seek of the sign. Okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just ask. Ask you who. What is this? And then just pray. Just pray in the realm of the Ruach. That's what Daniel was doing. Daniel was, he. you know what I'm saying? He's just in a, a mode of praying and Yahuwah gave him an answer and gave him more than he ever even thought that was, there was an unknown unknown that he that Yahuwah gave him. He didn't even know to ask those things. You see what I'm saying? Cornelius, he didn't know to ask those things. It was just he just was a devout man with a pure heart and a pure intentions. And Yahuwah saw that and accounted it as righteousness and came to him and says, you know what? Because of this, I'm going to give you this, just like Solomon. You see what I'm saying? All right. I hope we we get in this. All right. Okay, so that's that's what happened there. I think I, I established that. So this is Yahushua's ordination. It says, Then cometh Yahushua from Galilee to Jordan and uh unto John to be baptized of him. But Yachanan forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Yahushua answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. See, even Yahushua had to follow a certain order of what his father laid down for him. Okay? He didn't bypass anything. That's why he's our example. And only him is our example. We already have the example through Yahushua of how to operate in the order that we are to operate in. Okay? So, this is another understanding that... um. He had to fulfill our righteousness. So then he suffered him. Okay. And Yahushua, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw uh, the spirit of uh, Lua descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from uh, uh, Shamim saying, this is the beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Okay. So <clears throat> even this, I believe I bought, I put this in here because we need to understand uh, that through that we need to understand that Yahushua wasn't Yahushua just because he was the son. He was the son because of obedience. Obedience is what produces sons. A true son, sonship is through obedience. Okay? Because here it is, Yahuwah says, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That means he was doing something prior to. And I think you can find it in Isaiah 54. I'm not going to go there. But it talks about how Yahushua, he stayed up more. I, yeah, I got to go there. I said this in the previous video, but I'm going to say it again. I believe it's Isaiah 50 and 4. Isaiah 50. I hope it's Isaiah 50 and 4. Okay. Yes, Isaiah 54 says, And Yahuwah Lua hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. This is my this is my desire. All right. He walk he wakeneth me morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. I wish I had another translation. It's beautiful. So this is what he's saying. Yahuwah always woke me up every morning. 
I got to wake in every morning. Some of you are being woken up now at 3 a.m. in the morning. Who is waking you up 3 a.m.? Some may be 6 a.m. Some may get in the middle of the night, 12 a.m. Get up. Yahuwah trying, wants to say something to you. He wants to speak to you. You have to deny that flesh and get up. It says, here I am, Yah. I'm your servant. What have you to say to me? And he may not say nothing that first time, that second time, that fifth time, that 25th time. He wants to see your consistency. And then he'll drop he'll drop a breakthrough. It's you, you'll, you won't even have room enough to receive because of your consistency. And your imunai, your faithfulness. All right. So look, it says this. And he says, and Yahuwah Allah uh, have opened my ear. And I was not rebellious. I didn't go back to sleep when Yahuwah tried to wake me up. I didn't uh, uh, turn back from the instructions that I was getting uh, at these morning prayer calls. Okay. I wasn't rebellious. So that creates a, a son. That's what a son, a true sonship is through obedience. Neither turn away back. Okay. So that's what Yahushua was doing. He was getting information. He was getting, he was drawing closer and closer to Yahuwah. Day by day. Day by day. All right. So let's keep going. All right. So now this is a beautiful. I, I, let's look at this. Fasting increases your faith. Now, this is how fasting increases your faith. Let's look at this uh, story. Let's look at this of uh, what Yahushua was saying. All right. It says, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them. So this is when um, the, the uh, disciples trying to heal a, a, a young boy that was, I think he had, uh, uh, he was throwing himself in the fire and all this stuff and they couldn't heal him. So there was great commotion. All right. So here it is. Yahushua stepping on the scene. So here it is. He comes to his disciples and he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning, questioning with them. And straightway, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. Man. Hallelujah. And I spake uh, to thy disciples that they uh, should cast him out, and they could not. Now listen to what Yahushua is saying here. Verse 19, he said, and he answered him. So this is something that I, I hear people talk about fasting, but they don't really understand this, per this, this uh, portion. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? He says, bring him unto me. And when they brought him unto uh, him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell onto the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long ago uh, has uh, since he came unto him? He said, of a child. And all the time it has been cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now listen to this. Listen to what Yahushua is saying. This is about Imunah. Yahushua said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If, if you can believe, all things are possible to those that believe. All right. And straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Adon, or Adonai, I believe, but help thine mind unbelief. So that's 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 something that we can have within us. Let's wait till my camera gets right. Give me one second. Hmm. Give me one second. I'm just waiting for my camera to zoom in to get back right. I don't like 
I like things to be decently and in order. Okay, there it is. All right. So, where was I? I don't know if I got my point. Mm -mm -mm. So, belief. I was talking about the, the main belief. Let's see. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, there can be a duality within us to where we can believe in Yahuwah, but also there's some doubt at the same time. So, fasting removes the doubt. Okay? All right? It's because... This is what Yahuwah showed me uh, this week. There's a difference between just believing. Because if you ask anybody, how many how many of y'all believe that Yahuwah can heal this person? Or Yahuwah can do this and do that. Now, we, we believe. We know that Yahuwah can do anything. But when we ask, will he do it? There's the doubt. But having faith, true imunat, is true faith is able to take what's going on in the Shamaims and to manifest it naturally. That's true faith. That's when you know you have faith. When you're able to bring, because faith is what? The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. That's now faith. Faith is being able to take what's in the heavens and to materialize it in the natural. Okay? Faith ain't just believing. Faith is able to accomplish, bring that thing to pass, bring that thing that is not seen into the material world. So that's why Yahushua, when he's saying, if you just believe, all things are possible. OK, see, that's the difference between us and Yahushua. Yahushua had faith without measure. OK. See, we have faith that we have. It, it, we have to grow it. We have to nurture it. We have to. You know what I'm saying? So what you need to start doing, you need instead of, you know what I'm saying, if you have a stomach ache, pray over that thing. Build up your faith. Build it up in little areas. You see what I'm saying? I'ma share this. And I and I pray that it helps us. There was a time around 2013-14. So no, it was too, it was it was earlier than that. 2011. 2011. I'm 22. 23. There was a time in my life where I did not know what to do. And um, I was grieved in my Ruach. I wasn't grieved. It, it was a burden. And I had learned that sometimes Yahuwah can place a burden on you. And if we don't discern what that is... We can think that it's it's the most, we can think it's Hasatan or we just in a bad mood or whatever. So we'll try to watch TV. We'll try to do this to get out that funk. But it actually can be a burden that Yahuwah puts on us to push us to come to him. So I felt this burden because I, I had got kicked out of college. Uh, I didn't know what to do with my life. Even where I was going was... Uh, assembling myself too i didn't know i felt i didn't know it was so much going on there i didn't know what to do i, I was like you who you know this is what i had in my mind i'm thinking like i'm going through all this turmoil here this must be a test for me to endure this endure this chastening endure all this try this is a trial and you who had to tell me no <laughs> no he was shutting down doors because I was like, okay, it's not for me to go to school, so I'm a. Go I was get. I was looking at the craziest places to get a job. And there was a time I was fixing to get a job. The 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 person loved me. They were like, yes, yes, yes. Okay, man, we're glad to have you. And then they called me back and says, I'm so sorry, we just had a meeting, and they said that we cannot hire any more people. We can't hire not one more person. I do apologize. I'm like, what is going on? So I'm in this season where I I just didn't know what to do. So I went on a 21 day fast, what many call the Daniel fast. All right, and I was on this fast, and I'm seeking you. Who I'm talking about? I'm praying. I'm I'm talking about. I, I just gave myself to it because I didn't have a job. I didn't have nowhere to go. So I'm giving myself wholly over to it. You see what I'm saying? And around the tenth day, 
uh, I, I heard this. I heard this uh, as I'm praying or just meditating. I heard what would happen if someone were to fall out in front of you? And I was like, I would I would heal them. You know, what I'm thinking, OK, I, I, no, no, no. I said I would pray for them. I would lay my hands on pray for them. OK, next day I'm I'm seeking who meditating, praying, reading, studying, things of that nature. And I heard it again. What would you do if someone were to fall out in front of you? And like I said, I'm like, what? I said, I would, I mean, I would pray for them. Okay. Okay. Third day. I'm in the mirror. I'm in my bathroom. I'm in the bathroom. I'm I'm shaving. And I heard, I'm, as I'm shaving, I heard again. What would you do? If someone were to fall out in front of you. Now this time I'm like. I would pray for him. Okay. Now a little bit of backstory. I was living with my mother at the time. And she was. was She she had a. a, 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 a assistant living facility. Where she was uh, helping elderly people. And at this time. That's where I was helping her out. I was there. And so there was the elderly gentleman. Um, that was there. Okay. So. Fast forward. So when I said that, because I got, you know, I got kind of frustrated. So I said, I would pray for him. And right when I said that, um, the worker that worked for my uh, working for my mother hollered my name. And so when she hollered my name, I, I come out from the bathroom and here it is, this guy, the guy in the wheelchair. He done fell out, y'all. He fell out. I mean, he's just lifeless. So we get him. We put him in the bed. She's taking his pulse. And he, you can see he's gone. She's taking his pulse. She like, oh my goodness, y'all. He gone. He's gone. And I'm just sitting there assessing this situation. And this is what I heard. Now it's your turn. <laughs> so, so I reached out. I prayed for him. And I'm praying. I prayed. And as I was ending the prayer, I felt this sense to take a deep breath. And I felt this urge, I felt this deep breath in me. And when I exhaled, he inhaled. <gasps> and he came back. And not only did he come back, like we had called an ambulance and everything. So when he came, when he was they was putting him on the ambulance, he was fine. And also this this older gentleman had dementia. You know, at the time he had a broke hip. He, he, you know what I'm saying? He, he, his hip was broken weeks ago, so he was having trouble with his hip. He he wasn't talking. He was talking incoherent. He wasn't making full sentences or nothing. Uh, he was just incoherent and everything. So when he went to the hospital and came back, he was making full sentences. We was in a we was in the den area, the living room area. Now he has he had he had a uh, hospital bed with the rails. We're looking, we're we're chilling in the in the in the living room. All of a sudden he come out the out the room, walking. You see what I'm saying? Feeding himself, more coherent, able to respond, like all of this happened. And I remember uh the work I said, my goodness, we I think you prayed a little bit too hard for him. So just think about how that increased my faith when Yahuwah used me to do that. So even when I was at my lowest, I went to an hour of temptation. Even when I was at my lowest, when I felt like nothing, that situation would always come to mind. You see what I'm saying? That would always come to mind. But there was a time when that happened. I don't know why it happened. I don't understand. But it was a, it was a marker. Sometimes Yahuwah does things for us because it puts us in a, 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 a place that we cannot return. We cannot go back. You see what I'm saying? The things that Isaiah saw when he saw Yahuwah high and lifted up in his train filled the temples and the Malachians crying, Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. When you exposed to that, you can't doubt. You see what I'm saying? When uh, Yeremiah was before uh, uh, Yahuwah and uh, something touched his mouth and put his word in his mouth and all that stuff, that's something you can't go back from. You can't. 
when Ezekiel was at the river and he saw the heavens open like a scroll and he saw uh, visions of Elu and he saw the, the, the four beasts and the, and the wheel in the middle of the wheel and all that stuff and the throne and stuff. That's something that you can't forget. You can't go back. So Yahuwah, sometimes he does us to prepare, to propel our faith in another, another atmosphere, stratosphere, another level, but we can't go down to. That's why the Bible talks about how can it, if you once tasted of this, go back and turn back. You can't, it's a time of, it's, it's no return. So I thank Yahuwah for that. So there's certain things that you've been through that you can't return, you can't go back to. Yahuwah has propelled your faith in a certain realm that you know him. It's a certain knowing. That's that true faith. Something has materialized to where you knowingly know. And your faith can't go lower than that. See what I'm saying? All right, let's keep going. I know I'm saying a lot, but I know I'm helping somebody. All right. So let me get back to this, how this increased our faith. So let's, let us let me go back. Yahushua, Yahushua 23rd verse. Yahushua said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. And straightway the father of the child cried out, said uh, with tears, uh, Master, I believe, help mine unbelief. And when Yahushua saw this, and people come running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore, and came out of him, and uh, and he was as a dead, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Yahushua took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come unto the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto him, to them, this kind cannot come out forth. Can this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting? All right. So a lot of times, what I hear when people says this, well, you have to pray and fast to gain power to overthrow certain spirits. Certain spirits don't come out, but by prayer and fasting. That's inaccurate. This is what Yahushua said. Yahushua says, Lo, I've given you power over serpents and scorpions and over the, all the powers of the enemies. And by no means nothing shall hurt you. Let's, let's, let's read this one. Let me, let's read this one. This is Matthew 17, 19 through 21. This is what he says. Then came the disciples to Yahushua apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Yahushua said unto them, because of your unbelief. It wasn't that they didn't have enough power because they casted out spirits before and they had all power. Who should say, I've given you power to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing. So the power wasn't the problem. It was their unbelief that was the problem. So that's why he says, you faithless generation, how long shall I bear you? How long shall I be with, be with you? Then also with the with the father, if you can just believe many people that you should heal. He says it's your imuna that has made you whole. It's not faith is more than belief. It's actually having bringing materializing that this was in the Ruach. That's how I got to question myself. Do I have faith? Do I really have faith? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I need to, I need to grow my faith. Okay? Faith is like the grain of a mustard seed. It's not talking about the size of the faith. He wasn't talking about the size of the mustard seed. He was talking about how it grows. It's the smallest of all the all the uh it's the smallest of all the seeds of the earth or whatever the field. But if you cultivate it, if you nurture it, you exercise it, it grows into the largest of all the trees of the field or all the herbs of the field. It grows and it doesn't stop. It continues. That's what he was talking about. Cultivating faith. Working with faith and cultivating, not the size. See, that's the difference between a westernized mind and an eastern mind. We think about shape, size and stuff. Eastern perceptions think about how things function. So that's why they understood it. That's why we don't understand. And a lot of things in the Bible we don't understand because we have the wrong perception. Because we have 
we have Hasatan's perspective, this westernized devilish perspective that has been birthed in us and we're saturated in it. All right. So this is what he said. I know I'm taking so many rabbit trails, but it, it says, verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a, oh, I didn't even know it was that. If ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye should say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind of what? This kind of unbelief goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So it's the unbelief that we need to cast out of us. So prayer and fasting uh, increases our faith to believe in what Yahuwah has already ordained. So then we can address a situation. Fasting is a way that we build up our, our expand our spiritual capacity to believe in Yahuwah more so that we can allow certain, materialize those things that's going on in the Ruach to flow through us. You see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be unto your most holy name. All right. So another pair put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed. Like I said, I forgot this was in here. Which a man took and sowed in his field, which is indeed the least of the seeds. But when it is grown, he is the greatest amongst herbs and becometh a tree. And that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. I've already hit that. I'm not going to go back over that. But again, did you see how how it talks about the, the, not talking about the size, but how it is cultivated, how it grows. And also why many people didn't even get in his time because a mustard seed was something that people try to root out and try to contain. And so this is what Yahushua is saying. You can't contain the kingdom. You can't see people are trying to, going to try to come against what you're doing. They're going to try to come against your faith because they don't like it. But you got to, hey, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and it's the violent ones that take it by force. So even in prayer, you got to act like, you got to act, you're saying, you got to get in there. Because you got to understand what you're fighting. You're fighting in the Ruach realm, and you got to be serious. All right, so let's keep going. Because our life depends on this. All right. So also we need power in prayer, okay? Luke 9, 1 and 2. This is why it's so important that we fast to harness this power or to increase our spiritual power. All right. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of Elua and to heal the sick. OK, so notice how Yahushua. Uh, he gave them power and authority over the devils before he sent them to preach. OK, because this is what Shaul said. He said, I don't want to come in uh, wisdom, the uh, words of man's wisdom and speech. But I want to come into the demonstration. I want to come in the demonstration and the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. Because what we need to understand that we need to have power over the principalities that got the people's minds bound in this certain type of belief. So once we arrest those spirits in the Ruach realm, once we get that power and arrest those spirits in the realm of the Ruach and break their holes over the natural, the people, then when we speak to them, their, their ears will be receptive to what we're saying because that, that stronghold is broken off their life. So if you know anyone, any group of people who are bound by a Jezebel seducing, manipulative d d uh, spirit of divination and witchcraft, you got to come against that witchcraft, demonic Jezebel spirit that's initiating them into evil altars and has their minds locked by, with this delusion. You got to bind that spirit. You got to come against that spirit and you, yeah, you got to, you see what I'm saying? Through the Ruach, through prayer, all right? And you buy and you weaken that spirit's grip and this hole and things will start to crumble and then people, people start to awaken, okay? 
please look at my video that I did ab about the testimony of the witch doctor. A testimony of James Kowalia. He talks about certain things, how people, these people, there was 20 people praying. And they was changing, they was breaking people free all over the world. They didn't even know it. But in the realm of the spirit, these evil, these evil uh, uh, people, they, they saw it. They were like, these people are breaking people free that we had bound. We had these people bound. And they're breaking them free. We got to stop it. All right. So we have to understand the wiles of Hasatan in every way, shape, and form. Okay. So that's why we have to have power in the Ruach. To gain power so we can shut the mouths of the agents of darkness. And then by that time, what can a man do? They, they don't have any power. Their words, because they're powered by seducing spirits. So if I shut that spirit out, their words have no meaning. You see what I'm saying? It's spirits that give words meaning. It's the spirit of Elua, the every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahuwah. Hasatan does the same thing. Every word that proceeds out of his mouth, every delusion and illusion. So that's why the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but the mire through Yah to the pulling down of strongholds. What are the strongholds? Casting down imaginations, images, false images, and every high thing that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge, the instructions, the principles of Yahuwah. And we bring those in captivity once our obedience is fulfilled. Once we come into obedient alignment with Yahuwah, being consistent in prayer, being consistent in fasting, being consistent in doing these things, you begin to gain power. It's like these movies that we watch. We, You know, you watch a movie and they're fighting the enemy and they have this weapon, <clears throat> right? And they're saying this weapon has a charge. We need five minutes. You see, that's what prayer is like. Prayer is like you're constantly functioning and you have to consistently doing that to gain power, to gain that power, to generate that power so you can use that weapon. You got to keep doing because if you stop, then it, it like it goes down. So you have to be consistent, consistent, charge, charge, charge. And you get to a point where it manifests naturally and you can use that weapon, boom, and totally annihilate the enemy. So I encourage you, be fervent and consistent in your prayer life. Be fervent, consistent in your walk, and you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. I'm telling you, you'll be amazed. It's going to take some time. I'm going to read this to y'all. I'm going to read this. I got to read it. I do apologize. But I I pray that this is setting us free. Because I'm telling you, I, we see what Hasatan is doing in this day and age. We see the lies that he, he has under his grips. All right. Whole families are sold into witchcraft. Nations are sold unto this thing. False narratives that Hasatan has twisted. That's what wickedness is. Wickedness is when you twist Yahuwah's word. See, we think wickedness, and we also think wicked people can't do nice things. We don't, we don't, we don't think wicked people can do good things. They can. That's how they get you. That's the deception. They give you money. They laugh. They play. They have families, and everything look like it's in order, and everything, and they the picture perfect family. That's what. Hasatan does. See, we think Hasatan hates everything. No, he has to create an imagery of everything is okay. So he's not he's not gonna touch that marriage of these these people that's doing his will. It's gonna look good. That's the guys, that's the sheep clothing over the ravenous wool. That's what you see in political arenas and all that stuff. They look like they're all so good. The presidents and all, they got good children. And everything's a picture perfect. Uh, Ivy League family. But it's witches, their wickedness. I'm talking about all types of sexual sins, debauchery, all types of perversion. All that stuff's going on underneath. But on the surface, they look like the model citizen. Adolf Hitler was a model citizen compared to to our president at that time you see what i'm saying that's the guys that's the guys that's why we have to have spiritual discernment you can't go by 
The Bible says, don't judge by the appearance of the thing. Ah, spiritualism. All right. Luke 18. This is what Yahushua says. He says, and he spake a parable unto them to the end that men ought to always pray and to never faint. And not to faint. And we know this. I'm not going to read that. And it talks about a woman who was going to an unjust judge who did not care about Yahuwah. And she said, Venge me of mine adversaries. And she did this many days. She was consistent in her prayer. She was consistent in her walk. She was consistent in coming up every day, every morning, saying the same exact thing, doing the same exact thing. Okay? And it didn't matter. So she's the spirit that's over that man. She's breaking it down. She's wearing it down. So now here's this judge. Look, man, I don't care about you. Who? I don't care about this woman. I don't care about nothing. But please go avenge her adversaries. Let she wearies me her continual coming. And that's what Yahushua said. Will not Yahuwah avenge his leg, though they cry out to him day and night? Will he not bear along with them? He says, yes, he will avenge them speedily. He said, but when he comes upon the earth, will he find faith? Will he find those that truly... Because it's, it wasn't it wasn't like you who was just sitting there waiting. He had to wait till her faith increased in order for her to generate that type of power to do that. And once she did that, he came on the on the spot. He came right then. All right. And we're going to get into it. Let's go to Isaiah. I think Isaiah is the next one. No, let's keep going. But Isaiah, Yahuwah showed me something through Isaiah 58. We're going to get to it. That's going to be the last uh, sections of, of uh, Scripture. But Luke 10, 1 through 2, says, Out of these things, Yahuwah appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, are plenteous, but the laborers are few. It says, pray ye therefore to the allure of the harvest that he would send forth laborers unto his harvest. I'm not going to touch that one. Um, but we have to understand that we have to we have to pray that Yahuwah send people. Because if we go try to do it ourselves, we're going to end up getting tares. We're going to end up uh, gathering goats. And not gathering what, what Yahuwah wants. Because that's why we have to pray to him that he will send us and lead us and guide us. All right. So let's keep going. So let's look at Isaiah 58, 1 through 6. I pray that you can see this. I pray this video was, was a blessing. I pray that the audio was good. I'm in a new location. So uh, my internet is not good, so I couldn't go live. But uh, here we are, nevertheless. So let me show you what Yahuwah showed, shared with me. Like I said, I don't, I, hopefully I remember everything. Uh, that he shared with me. So look at this. Cry out loud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions. And the house of Yaakov their sins. Now look what uh, Yahuwah is saying. He says yet they seek me daily. And delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness. And forsook not the ordinance of their allure. Now when you look at another translation. This is what he's saying. He's saying, yet these people seek me daily as if they are a people that delight to know my ways. As if they are a nation that did righteousness. As if they forsook not my ordinance. He said, but yeah, they're, they're playing. They're doing other things, but they're coming to me as if they're not doing wickedness. They're not doing nothing I told them to do. They're not doing it the way that I've told them to. They have another order, another way of doing things. And I'm trying to put my, but they're asking, acting like, oh, yes, yes, we, we want to know more understanding. To, so it's, it, it's like a cognitive dissonance. They're, you know how you can, narcissistic people pretend like they ain't doing what they're actually doing. You see what I'm saying? They are abusing you, but they pretend like, what? I, no, no. That's a narcissistic Jezebel spirit. Okay, let's keep going. So they're acting like they they they're doing this. So and they ask me, like like you can fool you who. So they ask me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching me. Okay, so they all up in Yahuwah's face as if they're not doing anything. But wherefore 
have we fasted, say they? When did we fast and you don't see us? Wherefore have we afflicted our souls and thou talk, takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, this is what Yahushua is saying. Ye find pleasure. You're doing, or you do it to find pleasure. You're trying to get, get power to find pleasures out of others. How you can take from them. And you exact all your labors. Oh, I wish I had. Y'all, hold on. I got to get another. I got to get this. Uh, Give me one second. One second. There's another. There's another translation. But I have to bring it out. So bear with me. Isaiah 58. Let's get this. Let's see what NLT says. I'm sorry, y'all. My like I said, my internet is slow. I'm gonna have to get another internet provider. But I have to share this. Okay. So like this one says, Isaiah 58 and 2, it says, Yet they act so pious. Because it says, shout with the voice of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. He said, but they act, like, they act so pious. They come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn about me. They act like a righteous nation. They would never abandon. They act like they would never abandon the laws of Allure. They ask me to take action on their behalf. And they says, we have fasted before you. They say, we aren't your, your, why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves and you don't even notice it. I will tell you why. I respond, it's because you are fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. Even in your fasting, you are oppressing those that are around you. You are fasting, you are fasting to oppress others. If you're a pastor, you're fasting, trying to find ways, trying to see the next one. There's another spirit. You're seeking insight from another ruach on ways to further oppress your followers. You see what I'm saying? That's not that's not what Yahuwah is about. OK, let's see where it is. It says, uh, behold, ye fast for strife and debate. So you're fasting to try to. To get one up on somebody and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You should not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high, hollering and, and, and carrying on. Is this is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul is not to bow down thy head as a bulrush and to uh, spread sackcloth and ashes under him without call this a fast, an acceptable day to Yahuwah? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? What is the fast that is chosen? What fasting does? Fasting looses, it loosens the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free. And they and uh that ye break every yoke. That's the true ordinance of fasting. That's what you do when you're fasting. Okay? Fasting throughout all the stuff I just mentioned. These are the effects. These are the effects of fasting. All right. It's breaking people free. It's breaking yokes. It's loosening bands, wicked bands that people have put on you. It's uplifting those burdens. All right. Through the understanding of the Ruach, through the, through the you know what I'm saying, through uh, what you who is showing you, what you who is telling you, what you who is speaking to you, what is you who is speaking through you through others. That may be fasting with you or fasting on your behalf and, and speaking into you, the people that he sends. All right. So let's see. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? That's what Cornelius did. And thou bring the poor that are cast out to thine house. When thou seest thy naked that thou, not, uh, thou cover him and that thou uh, hide not thyself from thine own flesh. So instead of um, dissing yourself from your family members, you are supposed to be the light to your family. This is how you who it is. They are supposed to see you and be marveled at you. They may not understand you. They may not understand what you believe. 
but it's going to be the works. That's why Yahushua did the works. Yahushua worked because he knew his words. Folks wouldn't understand it. Man, what are you talking about? This is beyond my comprehension. But when you have the works, people can't go against the words. When you're healing the sick and raising the dead, are you uh, operating in the spirit of love? They're like, son, I don't know what it is, but I see a change in you. So it got to be you who. Are they going to say God? It's got to be Lord. I don't know what it is. And it's going to prick their, it's going to prick them what, it, what has happened. What is it? Tell me what you believe. Then you have the ear. See, fasting, that's the power of of praying and fasting and acting upon it. Practic These are the principles doing, being obedient, the principles of Yahuwah. Doing these things. It's breaking down barriers that where people would not look, you're becoming a monument. You're, you're, you're generating power from the Shamaim, from the throne room. The throne room of Yahuwah is an is an altar. It's generating power. And you're lifting Yahuwah up. And if you lift him up, he will draw. All right. Ah, I know I'm I'm long. I know this is a long one, but it's a good one. I've been on here an hour and 46 minutes. But um let's let's keep going. I'm almost done. It says, uh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. So again, we talked about generating that power. Gaining enough power, harnessing enough power. So now it's like you're a light. Then shall the light break forth as the morning. And then thine health shall spring forth speedily. See, now these are bands of weakness being loose. And then thy righteous shall go before thee. See, your righteous is going to go before you. Your righteous is your, your, your character and your reputation is going to go before you even before you get to a certain place. The glory of Yahuwah shall be thy re reward. That means that the glory of Yahuwah should be your rear guard. It should be behind you. He's not just going to go uh, before you, but he's going to be behind you. You see what I'm saying? So he's going to encamp around about you to where nothing can harm you. All right. Then shall thou call and Yahuwah shall answer. Thou shall cry and he shall say, here I am right there. And if thou take away from the midst of thee, the yoke, the put, uh, the putting of the finger or the pointing forth of the finger, the pointing of the finger, pretty much. Don't be fasting to try to come against someone else. Don't be fasting with other people in mind where you, they need to get checked. No. Fast for yourself. You see what I'm saying? And come against the spirit realm. So, because all that other stuff is going to be, you're going to be speaking vanities. It's going to be vain. It's going to be useless. Unprofitable. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, go to those that are hurting. Instead of trying to go to the people that are doing the thing, go to the ones that are hurting. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as noonday. And Yahuwah shall guide thee continually and satisfy, satisfy thy soul in drought and make, uh, make fat thy bones. And thou shall be like a watered garden and like a spring water. Uh, whose waters fell not. Same thing that Yahushua said to the woman. He says, if you drink of this water, if you drink, if you get Yahushua, if you drink the, the water that Yahushua is giving you, who he is, the very essence of him, this flowing from the holy, the Ruach HaGodesh is like a river. You see what I'm saying? If you get that river, that, that flowing water, that underground oasis and drink that, you'll never thirst again and you will become a wellspring of life into everlasting life and people will drink of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, and they shall be of thee that shall build the old waste places. You want to be the one that shall build the old waste places. Thou shall raise up a foundation of many generations. Ah, oh, this is so much I could say. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. Where the enemy tried to to, to, to disconnect you from you, tried to disconnect you and disassociate you from things and disassociate others, trying to be a breach in the covenant that we have with Yahuwah through Yahusha. 
He says, you, because of all this stuff we talked about, the discernment, the revelation, the garnering, the harnessing power, the getting the faith, all this stuff, you're going to be repairing the breach. You're going to be bridging the gap. You're going to be bringing, you're going to be busting down walls. You're going to be doing things. You're going to be like Jeremiah. You're going to be rooting up, pulling down, casting down to build things up. And this is an ancient path. It's a truly ancient path. Okay. It's a, it's a foundation of many generations. It's something that's been uh, set aside so much so that people don't even know it exists. It's a path that folks just not have forgot. They're forgotten. They didn't even know it was ever there because it's a path that was uh, uh, it was a path that was traveled many generations ago. And you're going to be repairers of the breach. You're going to be the restorer of paths to dwell in. See, Hasatan has made a highway to hell. But Yahuwah is saying, no, I'm going to give you a real path that leads to righteousness. And if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasures of my own holy day, uh, I'll read this. And call my Sabbath delight, the holy of Yahuwah, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, not finding thy own pleasures, not speaking thy own words. See, even prayer, don't just be speaking your own words. Speak the word. Whatever situation, find the scripture concerning that situation and pray that word because that's the law in the Shamayim. That's what Hasatan has to flee from. That's what you see what I'm saying. You begin to say that he can't he can't he can't stand. If you humble yourself before uh, the, under the hand, you will resist Hasatan, he will flee. He said he will rise you, he will raise you up in due time. Okay. Uh, then shall thou delight thyself in you who and will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov thy father. The true heritage of Yaakov thy father, for the mouth of Yahuwah has spoken it. And this is the principles of fasting, gaining power through prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Lord be unto your most holy name. Abba Yahuwah, I pray that this message may reach the ears of those that you have ordained it to reach, Father. I pray that this message will open the eyes of the blind, will give people faith to continue in what you have called them to, Father. I pray that this would be a beacon and this be a starting point to where you, Yahuwah, begin to work and manifest, Father. I pray that this be a seed that be planted and that it may follow right now, that it may uh, mature and grow other fruits. Follow right now in Yahushua's name. That this may be a hundredfold blessing right now. That where it just doesn't say one, that one shall put a thousand to flight and ten, two shall put ten thousand to flight. I pray that right now, Father, of a hundredfold blessing. A hundredfold blessing is not just a hundred times a hundred. A hundredfold blessing, when you fold a piece of paper a hundred times, it makes millions of, of, of squares. Not just a hundred squares. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's beyond our imagination. It makes millions. Fine. So I pray for a hundredfold increase through this message. Hallelujah. That it may shut the mouth of the wicked one. In Yahushua's mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I pray that this message be a blessing. Um, I pray uh, that it gives us power, give us insight, gives us, motivates us to do what Yahuwah is calling us to do in this hour. So uh, without further ado, um, I'm Eliyahu Malak, and I pray that you be blessed and continue to work with Yahuwah because Yahuwah is with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom and be blessed. Hallelujah.